some of the okay. questions, feel free to. So. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So the first question is, what were some of the challenges that you faced, that you faced when you first began taking on clients in this industry? Uh, I guess from my from my perspective, I, I kind of got in it by accident, you know, and it was just uh, a client got referred to me, uh, helped him with some unrelated uh, can unrelated to cannabis issues, and uh, asked me to take a look at uh, his his cannabis business, and I said, well, let me let me do a little research first because I know that there's some rules out there uh, with respect to it. And so I just, I did that research and got myself comfortable and it, and it took me a long time. It took, I probably spent 20 or 30 hours over a couple week period um, to kind of get myself comfortable w with what the issues were and what the tax rules were mm -hmm. before I decided to accept a client. The biggest challenges for me in the beginning were lack of books and records. Okay. Um, that was back in the medical days before it was a wreck. Uh, and he, <laughs> Dean's laughing because he knows exactly what oh, I'm talking yeah. about. Um, there were a lot of attorneys that would advise their clients, uh, you know, to keep them out of trouble and out of jail to shred their books and right. records, yeah. um, leave no evidence. And I, you know, as an accountant, that horrifies me. Mm -hmm. um, that was the biggest challenge, and, and um, converting people out of that mentality, even right. in the rec market, is a challenge. So, you know, you said you spent a lot of time researching before you took on any clients. So are there, from that, were there any steps that you had to really take to mitigate the, any liability and, you know, protect yourselves? Or was it enough to, you know, have the assurance, I guess, of the AICPA, the WSCPA, and, and the state board that, you know, you wouldn't be charged or, you know, they wouldn't go after you for anything? Right. Uh, we also made calls to our attorney and mm -hmm. our insurance company to mm -hmm. be sure that there wasn't uh, some kind of an exemption right. uh, for representing cannabis businesses, and, and there were not. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if you know nope. yours as well, but okay. um, I, have, I have a few partners in my business, so I, uh, <laughs> I have to answer to them, too. Mm -hmm. and, and before, I, uh, I actively um, held myself out in this space and accepted more clients. I had mm -hmm. to sit down and make them comfortable with it. Right. I had to teach them all about 280E and mm -hmm. Code Section 471. Mm -hmm. uh, and back then, the UNICAP rules, because there was still some of that that was being utilized back in the day, um, there's since been you know, a, a memo saying that they don't recommend that. But. Right, right. Okay. So what advice with them would you give to a fellow CPA who is looking to take on clients in this area? Do you think that you know, there's a bigger risk now, or has it just stayed the same? You know, I think that, you know, even though the Attorney General has basically put the Cole memo on hold or said he's not going to recognize it, I think all the states are still going to follow the Cole memo okay. um, because it's, it lays out sort of eight common sense uh, elements that you've got to have, and the states have already, uh, the states have already complied with that, and so I don't think they're going to roll back any of those uh, tenets of the, of the Cole memo. So. Okay. Um, most of the people that I talk to uh, don't think that this is really going to uh, affect the industry itself okay. right now. Uh, I don't know what your take is on that. Yeah, it's full steam ahead. Uh, the only people that seem to be getting cold feet are the, the people in the banking industry. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that personally our firm got a letter uh, from mm -hmm. our bank asking about our concentration of business and um, asked for a list of clients and, uh, you know, what percentage of clients that we have in this industry. So banks are, are looking at ancillary companies in addition to marijuana companies. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it seems like the banking industry is, the, is where I've seen the biggest change. I had spoken at a conference called Canacon last week, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of people there from out of state. And mm -hmm. um, and actually, I took a poll of the audience, and I'd say probably 95% of the people were from out of state. And I had clients that flew down from Alaska with cash. Mm -hmm. um, and Yeah, yeah. I don't take a lot of cash payments any longer. Mm -hmm. um, most of my clients have banking, in yeah. fact. But that's one thing I, I do require of clients is they have a bank account if okay. they have access. Um, it makes yeah. our job much easier. Um, I have, I've had some problems with clients that, um, that deal solely in cash in their cash management mm -hmm. procedures. Yeah. So we, um, you know, we work with them to try to get them to rein it in, and if they can't, then we, we politely suggest that they 
use someone else. Yeah. yeah. One of my last questions was about you know, the baking and, and how that relationship works, I guess, and if you do have to, if you're still seeing a lot of, um, you know, businesses still operating on the cash uh, method and, you know, they're very wary of, of having a bank account. Yeah, I think so. I mean, in the last couple of years, you know, initially we were receiving a fair amount of cash and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it sounds great, but it's, it's a headache. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, and now I rarely get cash. I, I can't remember the last time I got paid anything significant in cash. It's been, I'd say it's been at least a year and a half. Okay. So it's m most, like I said, in Washington and in Oregon, just about anybody can get a bank account. Um, here I think there's half a dozen or so banks I, yeah, that I know of that are right on top of mind. Uh, Oregon, there's three or four of mm -hmm. the kind of the bigger ones, so right. um, it's, it's less and less of a problem. And I think the other states, as they're, when they move to a recreational market or a, an adult use market, um, the banks will become more comfortable just because uh, they've gone through vetting with the state already, background checks and, and things like that. And so some of the banks here will also do that, but okay. once the state has already done it, I think the banks get a little bit more comfort. Okay. And there are uh, there are companies that will uh, do some of the compliance issues that banks normally have to do. Mm -hmm. um, so there can be a middleman between mm -hmm. the banking and the business that will uh, will offer opportunities to bank at regular banks like Bank of America mm -hmm. and, and those places. Okay. So those are popping up as well. Okay. Great. Yeah. Well, any last thoughts or um, that's all the questions I had. But any. Other advice or I guess tips? Yeah, get in, get you know, start taking clients in this industry. Mm -hmm. Please take the pressure <laughs> off. Yeah, of we're us, busy. You? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, <clears throat> I, I think um, I don't know if I said this before, but I think if you're gonna, if you are gonna serve clients in this industry, then jump all the way in. Yeah, don't don't, don't dabble. Don't do okay. one or two or three or six or something like that because. I think what you'll do is you'll, uh, there's enough issues out there, I think just on the, uh, on the tax side alone, that you're bound to miss a, a big issue at some point in time. So I know we've both been doing this for quite a while, and I can tell you I learn something every day, or at least once a week. Right? <laughs> so uh, I think if you're going to get in, get in, mm -hmm. do your research, and uh, make it a, a niche that you have a, at least... 25, 30 clients in, so you gotta get an understanding through the sort of the spectrum of the industry. Okay. So, and it, it has its unique challenges that um, that regular or non-cannabis businesses face. Uh, they they generally have large tax bills, so mm -hmm. um, negotiating payment plans. I've become good friends with the IRS. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I I talk to them pretty regularly on behalf of my clients. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I get a lot of referrals from other CPAs and other accountants yep. because they don't want to dabble, uh, yep. which I don't recommend that in this space. I, I think there's there's too many nuances, not only to the tax law, but to the regulations and things like that. That um, some of our our traditional tax planning, you know, needs to be tweaked a little bit depending on the state rules. Um, yeah. So you have to consider yeah. that when you're talking with clients yeah, and understand I, those rules. Right. I would agree. And I, I think one other thing is is that I think as the market matures in each state, especially when you have adult use uh, cannabis laws, uh, the people that are getting into the industry are far more sophisticated today than they were, say, four or five years ago. Um, so people that have had other successful careers, other successful business careers, are finding opportunities in this industry, and it's, it's a better, kind of a little bit higher quality of client a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So they get it. They've been in business. Yeah. They know how to comply with, the, with rules and, and regulations. So uh, I, I think it's, it's kind of nice. I mean... It's very nice. It's, it's yeah. nice, yeah. Well, great. Thank you both so much for joining me. Right. You're welcome. It's been great. Thank you.